Hello from Israel. I appreciate everybody who came to hear what we have to say today. It's not clear if anyone will spend time with us, but we think that this is a great opportunity for everybody. For the Israeli nation and everybody else, we will start learning a deeper and higher delivery of the force of the Israeli prophecy. This course is the first part of the meeting. This course is going to be an interview about relationships between man and himself, man and his fellow man, and man and God. There will be a great deal of things to cover. We are part of the Noachide World Center in Jerusalem, and this is the first lecture that we are giving. Soon we will be giving more lectures. Before we start with what we have to say today, we are going to do a small introduction, and we're hoping that it'll be effective. In this first lesson of the Berit Olam, we will focus on the subject matter of the rest of the course. Now, as I said before, basically the course is going to speak about the three relationships between man and himself, between man and his fellow man, and between man and God. However, this is not the only thing we'll speak about. In this course, we'll also speak in length about self-improvement, revealing forces of attachment, respect, appreciation, and listening. Basically, we want to strengthen every person here and provide some answers to that which is challenging in today's postmodern world. First, I would like to start with the goals of this lecture. But before I do this, I will begin with a short introduction about myself. My name is Chaim, and I am connected with the Noachide World Center. The head of our organization is Rabbi Sherki. We are an organization of Israeli rabbis who are working together in many languages and places all over the globe. We have people with us and supporting us in Europe, the United States, and other regions. I will start with a small picture in order to explain exactly what we're going to do tonight. We are going to speak about one specific issue in depth. We hope to thereby set the foundation for all five lessons which we'll share together in this course. Example number one, horse versus car. Once upon a time, when people wanted to get from one place to another, they had to use horses. After about a thousand years or more, when people wanted to get from place to place, they used a car. The difference between the car and the horse is that the car works harder and faster than the horse. It's not a very big or significant difference. It's only a quantitative difference. The motor in the car simply runs on horsepower, moving from one place to another. The second example is a ballistic rocket or ballistic missile. A ballistic missile has a very powerful way of moving from one place to another. No one has ever thought of using this ballistic missile to move from one place to another within the city, as it is shown in this picture. But the ballistic missile made a huge difference in where we could go and in how we perceive the world. We moved in an entirely new way. In this example, we moved to two very different areas. On the simplest level, we have a new dimension of height. The missile has allowed us to look at the Earth from the outside. We are also given another dimension of height, where we can see the entire world at one glance. And what's more, we've been able to reach new places out in the atmosphere. So, to explain this, before we had the missile, basically people asked themselves if the world was flat or if the world was round. After we started moving outward and seeing the world from above, this is no longer a question. This is basically the way that we speak about the new perspective of the world. The difference between the car and an airplane or ballistic missile is qualitative. Now, on this same thought, we can say that this example of the rocket and the new possibilities that accompanied it are analogous to the world without prophecy and the world with prophecy. Today, you would never ask yourself if the world is flat or round. Of course, we can see that the world is round. It's a very clear issue. This is how the world works, and the same thing applies to prophecy. Basically, the world without the real prophecy is not the same world as when the prophecy ceased to be broadcasted 2,000 years ago. Since then, we have found different ways of getting in touch with God without the prophecy. It's comparable to going back and viewing the world with only horses and the car. We don't know a lot of things that we knew when we did have the prophecy. So now the main thing we want to speak about today are our goals. Today, we would like to understand and to explain some of the differences between the prophecy and other types of thoughts, and to clarify the gap between philosophy and the prophecy. These two designated goals will be presented briefly in this instruction. 
The main goal is to explain why we need to understand why the prophecy allowed us to remain in this world while connected to the prophecy, to the people that we knew in biblical times, and to the Israeli nation. There are a few people in the tradition of the Jewish Kabbalah who are keeping the tradition of passing on the prophecy force through the religion of the Israeli nation. Only a few people in the Israeli nation now have or know precisely what that tradition is. We have met all sorts of people through the years who have had an issue with the prophecy. They see the world like the ballistic rocket we spoke about before. They see the world from a very interesting perspective. Everyone in the world likes either the horse or the car. This is what we're going to speak about now. To understand the differences and issues within the gap which exists between our two perspectives, philosophy and prophecy.